What's up, guys? Everybody's great grandma's favorite YouTuber is back. Open Ice Hits with Scotty Two Hockey, and the NHL is back as well. Tonight, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs facing off against the beastly Montreal Canadiens in an exhibition game, but that's not what I'm here to talk about right now. What I'd like to talk about with you folks is we're getting very, very close to this playing around with the Montreal Canadiens versus the Pittsburgh Penguins in a five-game best-of-three play-in series, and I'd like to give a little bit of an in-depth preview of that series, each team's stats, how they stack up against each other, and at the end of the video, I will give my prediction. We're going to start off with Montreal. Montreal this year didn't have the season they wanted to have. They were a fringe playoff team the year before. Coming into this season with some of the good rookies they were adding to the team, like Nick Suzuki, with Kerry Price expected to play a lot better. They were expected to, for sure, at least be a fringe playoff team, if not a playoff team. Unfortunately, they found themselves in the basement. They just squeaked into this qualification round. They were the 24th of 24 teams to make it. The record this year was 31-31-9. They had 71 points. That was good for 5th in the Atlantic Division, which is a stacked division. Their goals for is 18th with 212 goals this year. Their goals against is 23rd with 221. Their power play once again in 2019-20 was abysmal, just like 2018-19. Not as bad as 2018-19 though. They had a 17.74% Power play, which was 2.29, below the league average of 20.3%. Their penalty kill wasn't great either, but not as bad as what the power play is. They had a 78.67% penalty kill, 1.30% below the league average. Their team shooting percentage, I would like to see it get a lot higher. Montreal gets a lot of shots on goal. They, also, they get more shots on goal than Carolina, and we all know Carolina puts a ton of rubber on net. Um... Their team shooting percentage is only 8.6%. I, myself, personally, would like to see it at least get up to 10%. They're 0.09% below the league average on that as well. Their leading scorers are Thomas Tatar with 61 points. Then it's a pretty significant drop-off after Thomas Tatar with his line mate, Philip Deneau, who only has 47 points, which by Deneau's standards is really good. But as far as your top three scorers go... 61 points and 47 points and the 44 points that Max Domi has sitting in the third position is not very good. It really is not very good when you look at the depth chart for Montreal when it comes to scoring. They are a team that needs to score by committee because they don't have those stars up front. And we're going to look at the goalies. Realistically, I should just look at Carey Price, but anything could happen. He could get injured. God forsake he gets COVID or he gets sick or something like that. Uh, it would have to be a backup coming in and replacing him. Maybe Caden Premium, maybe Charlie Lindgren. But uh, my guess would be Charlie Lindgren. I don't think they're going to take Premium and put him in this kind of situation. So I listed Price and Lindgren's numbers. Kerry Price, in 58 games played, had a 27, 25, and 6 record. He faced, um, he faced 1,755 shots. He made 50... 1,595 saves, he had 160 goals against, a .909 save percentage, and a 2.79 goals against. Sorry about that, guys. I stumbled a little bit on the price stats. You got me there. And then we go into Charlie Lindgren. In six games played, he had two wins, four losses. He faced 178 shots. He allowed 20 goals and made 158 saves. He had a terrible .888 save percentage and a 3.33 goals against. So Lindgren's numbers were not good by no means. And Montreal has no injuries to list. And I also made a side note that Alexander Romanov will be joining the team shortly for practices and stuff, but he cannot play in this playing round. And if Montreal advances, he cannot play in the playoffs, unfortunately. And then we go into the Pittsburgh Penguins, and it's night and day different from the Habs, especially when you look at their power play, their penalty kill, their team shooting percentage. Montreal is below average on all these. Pittsburgh is well above average on most of these. Uh, their record is 40-23-6, good for third in the Metro. They have obviously have a better record than Montreal. Uh, they have nine more regulation wins than Montreal. Their goals for is also better than Montreal's with 224. Their goals against, once again, is better than Montreal's. They have 196 goals against. Their penalty kill is 82.11%, good, good for 2.14% above the league average. So Montreal is like two point something. I forget what it is. I'll check now. They are, Montreal is... 2.29 below the league average when it comes to the, uh, their power play or their penalty kill or power play, whatever. And Pittsburgh is 2.14% above the league average on that. And then we go to Pittsburgh's power play, 19.91%, which for Pittsburgh standards really isn't that great. Pittsburgh is like a, usually a 20% at least 
power play team, but it's still very good. It's still 0.11% above the league average. Once again, they're above the league average on that. And their shooting percentage is right at where I would like to see the Montreal Canadiens shooting percentage be. 10% shooting percentage, and they're 0.5% above the league average on that one. Their leading scorers are Evgeny Malkin, only because Crosby's been hurt for a big portion of the season. Same thing with uh, Gugnet, though they have a few injuries for sure. I have a few listed here. Their second leading scorer is Brian Russ with 56 points. And I don't think, I don't have 100% faith that Brian Russ can keep that kind of pace against the Montreal Canadiens in this playing round. He is a player that could let the Pittsburgh Penguins down for sure, but at the same time, he could do what he was doing in the season and do the opposite and be on fire. So we'll see. It's a question marks around Rust for sure. And then we got Sidney Crosby, who had 47 points this year, coming in at third. Uh, their goalies, Matt Murray, in 38 games played, has a 20-11-5 record. Um, he's faced 1,055 shots. He made 948 saves, and he had 107 goals against. He has a .899 save percentage and a 2.87 goals against, which by Murray's numbers in the regular season isn't the best. But what he's done in the past in the playoffs and what kind of playoff goalie he is makes me think no matter what, they are going to go to Matt Murray in this playing round. Unless he plays terrible in the first game or the first couple of games and he plays himself out of that spot, I don't think Tristan Jarry will be the starter in this series. I could be wrong because his numbers are better. Maybe they're going to show some faith in uh, Jarry, kind of like they did with Flurry when Murray came in. Flurry and Murray, I know it rhymes. But they... Uh, they replaced Marc-Andre Fleury, who had had success, who had won the Stanley Cup and is a beast in the playoffs. They replaced him. They put Mark Andre, they put uh, Matt Murray in his place in the playoffs, and they won a Stanley Cup with Matt Murray. They won two, if I'm not mistaken, with Matt Murray. So they could do this with Jarry, too, and who knows, could be the same outcome. Pittsburgh could definitely win the Stanley Cup for sure. Christian Jarry, in 33 games played this year, has a 20-12-1 record. He has faced 985 shots against, he made 907 saves, and he only allowed 78 goals against. So Christian Jarry has some very good numbers. I actually forgot to write down his save percentage numbers and his goals against, but they are better than Matt Murray's. They are 100% better than Matt Murray's. And when I actually put this video up, I will edit in his uh, goal, his uh, save percentage and his goals against in the top of the video. So you guys will see what his save percentage and his goals against is. Because me being a bonehead trying to rush through these notes, of course, forgot to write that one side note. And when it comes to Pittsburgh's injuries, they actually do have a few injuries. Sidney Crosby is listed as day-to-day, -day, but he should play. He should be joining the team. I don't believe he's been in any practices yet, but he should be in this playing series for sure at some point, especially the way Crosby is. You know he's going to want to get in there. And then we have Nick Spugstad, who had spinal surgery in May. He's out for a while. He's definitely not going to be playing in this series. And Dominic Simone is out six to seven months. He recently had shoulder, sur shoulder surgery, so he definitely will not be playing in this series either. So there's the team. There's how they stack up against each other. Basically, when you look at it on paper, Pittsburgh is better in every single category. But when you look at them on the ice, play against each other, it's almost always a close game. These teams play well against each other. Montreal has upset Pittsburgh in the past. Back in 2010, I believe it was 2010, 2011, when they had a lack. They beat them in a seven-game series when Pittsburgh was heavily favored to beat the Montreal Canadiens, and Montreal ended up going to the Eastern Conference Finals that year. Recently, in past years, they've beaten the Pittsburgh Penguins in big games, maybe not playoff games, but in big games that mattered. Montreal can beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. What they need to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins is Terry Price has to be absolutely lights out. Uh, all of your top six has to play well. Uh, they can't rely on their depth scoring. The third and fourth line in Montreal are just unreliable. The scoring isn't there. That top line, that Brendan Gallagher, Philip Deneau, and Thomas Tatar line has to be lights out. And they have to stay five on five as much as they can. They can't end up in the box. And even if they are on the power play, Montreal almost is worse on the power play than what they are at 5-on-5. Five five. They have to keep it 5-on-5 five five as much as they can because when it's 5-on-5, five five, Montreal can manage to get a lot of shots on goal. They can manage to get momentum, and they can manage to steal games. And I could definitely see them stealing this series. But as far as who I think is going to win the series... I honestly, truly believe the Pittsburgh Penguins will be too much for the Montreal Canadiens. I am a diehard Habs fan, and even if they do lose this series, they've got a good, good shot, a 12.5% chance of getting the first overall pick, Alexis Lafreniere, this year. And I would, either or, I'm happy with either or. I want to see Montreal win. My heart says I want to see the Habs win. But if they do lose this series, it won't be a major letdown. I will not cry about it. I would just like to see a competitive series. I would like to see a five-game series. I do not want to see the Habs 
Avs get swept. Barely put up any goals in this series. I'd like to see some good things from players like Nick Suzuki, uh, players like Shea Weber, Max Domi, of course, Kerry Price. So even if they do lose this series, they can carry some confidence into next season. That's just my personal opinion. And my prediction for this series is the Pittsburgh Penguins will win this. It will be a close series. It will go five games, and Pittsburgh will win it three to two. Three games to two. That's the Scotty 2 Hockey prediction. Let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, have a great day. Stay tuned for the channel, guys. Hockey's back. I'm going to come out with as much hockey content as I can. Of course, I had two kids. I work full time, so I don't have a lot of time to put into YouTube. But now that hockey's back, the free time that I do is going into my YouTube videos. I'm so stoked that hockey's back. I can't wait to see the Habs hit the ice against the Leafs tonight. I'm predicting a 3-1 to one win for the Montreal Canadiens. Go Habs, go. Feel free to leave in the comments what you thought of this video, what you think of the upcoming playing series, and what you think of tonight's game. And if you can, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. Have a great day, folks. Open ice hits with Scotty to Hockey. Over and out. Hockey's back. Habs, hockey's back. Leaf and Habs tonight. Leafs and Habs tonight. Go Habs, go. Woo!